Well, it's, it's tragic. I mean, it's, it's something, you know, nobody would want to have to go through what's happening there now. There's some things that happened that should have never happened, but at the end of the day, there's can, some good can come out of this because we're going to be, as a board, we're going to be able to put some uh, policies and procedures in and, and maybe some other things and prevent any possibility of anything like this ever happening again. It should have never happened the first time. But anytime you've got a part-time board, and I'm certainly not making excuses, but you've got a multi-million dollar agency, you've got to put in some checks and balances to make sure it doesn't go awry. And there's no question there were not enough checks and balances, but I can assure you when the dust settles, uh, there's going to be some checks and balances, and, and I don't think we'll ever see this again. So for that regard, it's, it's a tragedy to go through, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a blessing because we're going to be much better off. right there and, and uh, I was not at the meeting I, I think that's the first meeting maybe I've been to in eight or ten months uh, but as I sat there and interacted with that board they were all stating that they knew they had talked about this they just simply did document it in their minutes and as they ratified those previous minutes to change them I voted with them because that's what they were saying they did and that was clearly their intent and after that was over uh, I admonished that board and told them I said in the future, you need to read your minutes and make sure they're reflective of exactly what you did. Because I said, that's the voice of this board. I said, if you get into any kind of litigation and you do not have it documented in your minutes, it doesn't matter what you thought you did, the court is only going to look at what's in your minutes. So I said, it's really, really important to always read those minutes and make sure they're accurate before you vote for them and adopt them. And it turns out, since then, I was not able to make the last meeting because I was out of state. But they've rescinded that vote and now decided that they did not take that action and so they've rescinded those minutes. So evidently they took heed to what I told them that day. They need to make sure they are accurate. Now we look, were looking at the attendance records from the last two years and it looked like you weren't able to attend a lot of meetings. I'm not. They Why? have a lot of meetings while I'm here. And I don't work, I'm still earning a living. So when they decide to have a meeting at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the day or at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, a lot of times I'm on the job and I can't just walk off the job. So all of them are elected officials. And Senator Burks and I are, are legislators. She runs a farming operation and, and we can't always break loose. But uh, I think they're going to have a meeting. One of the boards, it's not the main board, but there's a board that I do not sit on that's going to meet Monday. And I'm going to try to attend it if I can. But there could actually be something at work even prevent me from entering going to that meeting, but I'm going to try to attend it. Do you think that kind of begs the question of whether this board needs to be reconstituted or kind of re-put together to to assure that people who are appointed to it, you know, do have schedules that can make it there? Could be. It very well could be. But it's hard for legislators to make it. Just like they can have, they have meetings from time to time when we're actually here and in session. And we certainly can't make those. And, uh, but it, it should be. But I, I feel, I've always felt that our role uh, as legislators is more as a liaison back between the legislature and them. But uh, it's, it's rolled around. I've not always served on the board, but I actually served on that board back in the 80s when I was a county executive of White County. So I served on it then as an elected official. And I made all those meetings then because my schedule would permit it. We, I handle a lot of programs, federal dollars and everything, and each one is unique in itself. And we need to make sure that we're meeting all the pro program requirements. We're crossing every T and dotting every I. We're going to have to put in policies and procedures to deal with all this and make sure that the, the departments are adhering to our policies and procedures. You can't go to a meeting for an hour or two hours a month and keep track. You've got to depend on people. We depend on audit reports. You've got to depend on paper report. So those people we're going to have to depend on have got to be employees of that board. And I think that's the biggest change we've got to make.